bilateral cataract in a middle-aged lady. She has oculocutaneous albinism, hypermetropia, nystagmus and amblyopia being taken up for a cataract surgery with aniridia iode implantation. A 8 mm external tunnel is created. After reflecting, the non standing table combined flap The uh, unedited lens has a diameter of 8 mm and it's got an optic zone of 2.5 and overall diameter of 12 mm. The internal tunnel incision is made to about 3 mm. AC is deepened with dispersive viscoelastic. My tunnel floor entry with cystitome, wherein I don't go through the tunnelette, but I perforate the floor of the tunnel and get into the AC. The advantage is the tunnel is sealed now, so viscoelastic does not leak out shallow in the chamber. There is no folds on the cornea, as you can see here. Any part of the antechamber lead surface can be chained, can be reached. And I've done a larger rexis being done in the topical, so I've injected a small amount of 1% lignocaine into the eye. Internal opening is enlarged to 6 mm now. Hydro dissection is performed, and the nucleus is ex ex expressed by Brisco expression using Sinch key hook and 26 gauge Brisco injecting cannula. The cannula in my right hand is continuously injecting viscoelastic so that the endothelium is adequately protected from the nucleus that's getting collapsed. Cortical aspiration. Sub incisional cortex is removed by J shaped right in depth cannulas. Through the iris, as it's transillumining, you can see the cortical material being aspirated into the pore. Complete cortical aspiration is extremely important in cataract surgery to minimize the postoperative inflammation. Anterior capsule is adequately polished with the same cannulas. AC is deepened periodically. The entire uh, technique, entire surgery is a low pressure technique at no point of time. The pressure inside the eye is increased. That is the aniridia eye oil. It has a diameter of 8 mm. The caliper is set to 9 mm. That's 8 mm. And it has got a central clear zone of 2.5 mm. The other eye, I had implanted a lens of 4 mm pupil, which will resemble or mimic mesopic pupil. Here, I wanted the photopic pupil size, so I have chosen a lens with 2.5 mm pupil diameter. It's a PMMA lens, it has to be held without applying viscoelastic on it. Viscoelastic is after holding the lens, viscoelastic and a drop of antibiotic is put on the tunnel, viscoelastic additionally and uh, it's not defeating, it's the right size tunnel. Maybe I should have created a half a millimeter larger tunnel. Lens is placed behind the iris. No attempt is to is made to take the lens in the capsule or bag. Visco is injected and the eye wall is rotated to the posterior chamber. I 
As you can see, the intraocular lens will remove much of the glare the patient has. The power of the lens is 31 diopters, she being a hyperopic. Pupil dilates on deepening the chamber. It's a watertight, airtight, watertight wound at this time. So I can leave it uh, without any suture, but this will create about 0.75 adapters of astigmatism. So I will put one stitch in the center. This is a needle parking technique where after passing the first bite, you leave the needle on the sclerosal surface without holding it and let it rest on the natural position and then you take the uh, needle at the same uh, side. So this will prevent, avoid lateral shifting of the two lamellae. The lateral shifting will cause unnecessary gaps in the tunnel and also it will produce surprised astigmatism. So this technique, a single stitch in the middle is adequate. Maybe this, uh, the knot is buried and the candidate tenon slap is co-opted with using the uh, fibrin glue. There is no need to bandage the eye. I patient will start using the post operative medication immediately. So very rewarding surgery, very gratifying to the patient. He cataract, hyperopia and the enormous amount of glare the patient has has been avoided and the patient's contrast vision is going to be much better. Thank you.